this is one of those times where you're glad the weather person was really wrong. Hey? Praise the Lord. It's even warmer than last Sunday morning, I think. Nice to have you here. This is, uh, this is our big tent revival that none of you are sitting in. But I thank John Braun for all his hard work of setting up the, uh, the tent just in case the weather was Canadian today. Let's give John a hand wherever he is. Very good job, man. Very good. Good to good to have a tent. after she opens a prayer for our, our service this morning. Come on up, Michelle. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Um, yeah, I'll open in prayer, and then we'll work through our daily planet <laughs> announcement sheet. But um, Lord, thank you for this uh, chance to gather together and that the rain's held off and that we can worship you, um, yeah, as one, one body and uh, yeah, we just pray that you bless Bob as he opens your word up for us and uh, that we're all encouraged by what he shares from it and that you would really be speaking through him and that this week would be one um, 
of glorifying you and uh, furthering your kingdom here in Sycamus. In Jesus' name, amen. Yeah, so if you uh, haven't grabbed one yet, we have our uh, bulletin sitting over there on the table. Um, and so we have a few things going on um, this coming week. Uh, we have our normal youth events on Thursday. Uh, so that's the senior youth group from grade 8 to 12 uh, here at the Hub from 6.30 to 8.30. Um, it's outdoor events. Uh, so if you have students in your home that would like to come to that, we're always excited to see more people out there. Um, and so that's going on. Uh, last week we had another event here at the Hub. We played some socially distanced capture the flag with pool noodles so that was lots of fun it was mostly an opportunity for people to hit each other but <laughs> we enjoyed it we had a campfire and so we usually try and do something fun like that um and so that's going on this week and then the following week we're gonna do a junior youth event so that's grades six and seven um here at the hub as well so that's on may 4th tuesday and that will be 6 to 8 30 um, and we'll be sure to have that in the bulletin for you all next week um, and just a reminder that this on May 14th, uh, Bob's Burgers, the fundraiser is happening um, just to raise some awareness of the Hub Project, which is going really well. We've raised $39,000 so far. Um, so we're at about 10% of our goal. So we're hoping to keep that moving forward as well. Um, so we invite some friends and family out on May 14th for Bob's Burgers. Um, and yeah, if anyone wants any free books or anything like that, that's still out on the table as per usual. So if you're looking for something to read this week or just to grow spiritually, um, those are some awesome resources to check out. So I think that's everything. Am I missing anything? I don't think so. Okay, well, <laughs> let's worship together. Do I put my glasses on? I think I do. There we go. I remember the days when I didn't need these. <laughs> then I remember the first time I put them on, I was like, wow, things are so clear. Yeah. I noticed that when I was trying to change a, f uh, a fuse in my car. I, no matter where I got, I couldn't see the print on the fuse box. I was like, okay, that's it, right there. I need to get something to happen here, okay. Who you are, that is who you are, Lord. 
Lord, that is who you are. 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 Do you believe this part? Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. Even when I can't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. No. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. For you are the waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are.
God's people say, Amen. Amen. We call up Aiden. He's going to read the scripture for us this morning. You can turn in your Bible or on your phone, turn on your Bible, as my dad would say, to uh, 1 Peter chapter 1, starting at verse 12. Do you want to do Matthew as well? Okay, well, you guys are turning to 1 Peter. I'm going to quickly read uh, out of Matthew 17. Uh, 1 to 8, I believe. You don't have to turn there. Uh, I'm just going to read this quickly as a bit of a prologue, as Bob said. So this is the transfiguration. Um, this is after six days, Jesus took with him Peter, James, and John, the brother of James, and led them up a high mountain by themselves. There he was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun, and his clothes became as white as the light. Just then, there appeared before them Moses and Elijah, talking with Jesus. Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, I will put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was speaking, a bright cloud enveloped them, and a voice from the cloud said, This is my son whom I love. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell face down to the ground, terrified. But Jesus came and touched them. Get up, he said. Don't be afraid. When they looked up, they saw no one except Jesus. So we're just going to go over to Peter now. So this is First uh, Peter 1, uh, 12 to 21, I believe. Yes, so that's what I'm going to read. Anyway, Bob can correct me. Okay. So, so I will always remind you of these things, even though you know them and are firmly established in the truth you now have. I think it is right to refresh your memory as long as I live in the tent of this body because I know that I will soon put it aside and our Lord Jesus Christ has made clear to me. And I will make every effort to see that after my departure, you will always be able to remember these things. We did not follow cleverly invented stories when we told you about the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but we were eyewitnesses of his majesty. For he received honor and glory from God the Father when the voice came from him from the majestic glory, saying, This is my son whom I love, with him I am well pleased. We ourselves heard this voice that came from heaven when we were with him on the sacred mountain. And we have the word of the prophets made more certain, and you will do well to pay attention to it, as to light shining in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. Above all, you must understand that no prophecy of scripture came about by the prophet's own interpretation. For prophecy never had its origin in the will of man, but men spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. What a great passage. Passages. Can you imagine you go for a hike with the Lord Jesus one day? You think you're just going up the mountain for a little hike and all of a sudden there's brilliant light and he's transformed into um, his glorified state. And you see Jesus, the son of man, as he is. And then Moses and Elijah step out of heaven to talk to him. That's some kind of hike. It's quite amazing when you think about what those disciples got to see. I take comfort in the fact that even after they saw that, they... They still doubted. And the reason I take comfort for that is because I've seen the Lord do some pretty big stuff in my lifetime. And uh, once in a while, I still doubt too. So I'm grateful for the humanity um, in the middle of his majesty. Let's, uh, Let's pray real quick. We know we need you, Holy Spirit, if we're going to understand these truths that aren't man made. But since they're from you, please by your grace interpret them for us we pray and apply each little bit of this bread of life to every heart in the way that every heart needs it applied to them to mine as well lord jesus we focus on you you are our hope and our king and our god and we thank you that you love each person here we thank you that you love the world that you love this region that lord you love the lost And we were lost once, and you reached out and brought us home. We pray, Lord, that you do that for all 
the folks out there that are in despair, that are just reeling from this pandemic and all the chaos in the world, we thank you that you have a plan. And Lord, may you give folks out there that don't know this the glimpse of your sovereignty and how you can take care of them through it and the world and you'll bring us through and God you will rescue us one day and the way you forgive our sin Jesus you're going to come again this time as reigning king we can't wait for that Lord so bless us with your hope and your power this morning Jesus our, our Lord and King help the sick to know that you are their healer the broken to know that Lord you will put them back together may you lower the proud and raise the humble in Jesus name amen I'm just going to turn this guitar down it's echoing a little bit here I think I got it every time we talk it resonates with the strings okay so you you saw that we um we got Aiden to read the prologue to what Peter wrote in this chapter, and he was talking about his his experience with James and John going up the mountain and seeing the Lord Jesus glorified. It was like the human suit got unzipped, and you could see the the sheer majesty of Christ um, that was veiled by human flesh, veiled by flesh. The Godhead see that old great Christmas lyric, right? And they got to see how Jesus was God. With skin on. And uh, now that's the preface to what Peter's talking about here in 2 Peter 1. Remember, he's trying to bolster our faith. He knows these Christians are going through awful persecution um, by Rome, and he's trying to um, say to them that you're being forged in the fire to be God's church and you're going to be okay. And I've got to remind you about these things, okay? And you'll see in, the, um, in the, the Daily Planet bulletin there that there's uh, sermon notes to follow along to help you out a little bit. Um, I, I was reading J.D. Phillips' paraphrase. He's a pastor in the 50s, and he, he wrote this. He said in Peter's words, I won't fail to remind you of things, although you already know them and you're established in the truth. Already know and standing firm, established in the truth. He, what he wants is to make sure you know that you know the truth, okay? And he says, there, I'm going to remind you about these things, even though you already know them. So it's kind of like a sports team that studies the playbook, even though you may be a, um, an NFL player or an NHL player and you're really... You're established in your sport. You've got the skill. You've had the training. He's saying that you're going to go over the fundamentals again and again. It's the only way to be a good team. Go over the fundamentals again and again. The techniques again and again. The drills, the line skating again and again. The line running in basketball again and again. Because this truth conditions your heart. For this reason, Christians should never get tired of the basics. Never lose sight of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because every time you hear it, you will receive its power. It is the power of God unto salvation, right? Every time you listen to it, you'll find your soul renewed. And God will impart new insights into the good news as you practice it. But you've got to go over the gospel every week, every day. You've got to remember the good news. And he says, I want you to be remember that you're established in in truth, this is the rock. You're building your, your life on the rock, okay? And Peter fulfilled the command that Jesus gave him to strengthen his sheep, to feed his sheep, and to strengthen his brothers. So Peter's doing that. He's strengthening the church, and he's saying, don't forget the basics, okay? Because point two, we need to be reminded of the truth because we forget. C.S. Lewis said we had forgetting disease, and we forget it's only right I should keep on reminding you. Um, a team that doesn't go over the playbook, practice well, can't play the game well. When you wake up in the morning, you will forget some truth about Jesus that you heard on Sunday. I mean, there's been times where it's Wednesday and I'm like, what did I preach about on Sunday? And I'm the one that preached it, right? I'm just like you. I get up in the morning and um, a million different things hit me in the face. The world's negativity, 
the, um, the worries I have, the stresses of the day, and, and I forget that Jesus is in control and I forget that he saved me, right? And so you've got to remind yourself. You ever get up in the morning and you realize, I woke up and I'm so thirsty, right? And you got to have a drink of cold water and you go, oh, that is so good. Well, you got to wake up every day and remember, remember your body is, your soul is thirsty for the truth. And you got to remind yourself, quench your thirst. You can't just drink water once a week, right? You need to drink it every day. And um, then you, when you're hydrated, you can now share the living water with the people around you. It's that example of the cup. You fill it up to the top and it overflows to the people around it, okay? So keep reminding yourself because you got to be reminded. If you're feeling frustrated and down today when you came to church and tired, that's probably because you're living in a frustrating and tiring and weary world that's a desert and you, you got to come every day to the, the the water of life jesus so keep your eyes on jesus um the writer of hebrews said right the author and the finisher of our faith who for the joy set before him endured the the trial the cross and so you got to keep your eyes on him to make it through whatever trial you're going through three peter says our time to pass this on to people is short. See, there's an urgency in Peter that I didn't realize before. I've read this book before, but I've never preached through it yet. So I noticed really for the first time that Jesus had said to Peter, Peter, you haven't got long. You got to really get busy and start sharing the truth with as many people as you can because you're not going to be here long. Peter um, was, cru was crucified under Nero likely in the year 68 AD. So this is probably written between 65 and 68 AD. So Peter had a mere 35 years between the time Jesus went to heaven and the time that he went to heaven. 35 years goes fast. So fast. This Now that I'm in my 50s, I can say that. I was kind of blown away when I realized this year was 40 years since Raider of the Lost Ark came out. No way. Well, yeah, you were in, like, grade six. Oh, man. When did that happen, right? I mean, that's how fast time goes. And um, this church is 13 years old this fall. And uh, you guys that I've known for that long, that have been here that long, you are a lot grayer than you used to be. I can see your face when I now, and it's good looking, trust me. But when I compare it to the face that are in pictures of the first hour races we did, I'm like, Wow. I, I look at a picture of me and I'm like, I was, a, I was 39. This is crazy. And so you got to realize your life is a blink, right? James said it's a vapor that appears for a little time. It's like when you get up in the morning and you breathe on a cold morning, you see your breath and it's gone. I was sitting on the deck one day looking at a cloud in the morning. It was one of those little wispy clouds that was trucking across the valley in front of Queese Mountain, probably going 35, 40 kilometers an hour. And I watched that cloud kind of form, and then it was gone. Peter realizing that he's got this much time on earth to make a difference. That's why if you retire from your job, you don't retire from working in the church as much as you can to get as much good out there as you can, to get the gospel out there as much as you can, because you've got this much time. And um, it goes fast. So remember you're here to be a light. I'm so glad that we can, um, we, we've been doing outreaches all along, like small, taking people packages, having coffee with discouraged people, talking to non-Christian families in the hub. They come to visit. They, they want Bibles. We, we've been, Michelle and I can go every Monday and make hot lunch for the, the kids still at the high school. Can't wait till we can do that here again. But I'm excited that as a church, we can do Bob's Burgers, not so much as a fundraiser from the hub, for the hub, but to get families here from the town again and to um, do something fun. I'm excited about the junior high outreach on May 4th and to see youth functioning again. And um, nothing will stop you right now from going for a walk with a friend that needs Jesus. You can go sit on a patio somewhere and have a coffee. Don't let the circumstances stop you from redeeming the time. I met, um, <laughs> I met some folks that work in church and you know, they're, they're frustrated, but they're being 
examples by continuing to push forward. Because the pandemic doesn't stop the gospel. The church is still being built. So pray for the opportunity and pray for the creativity to use the time you've got wisely. Okay? Remember the good thing about the good news also is this. This is the next point. Verse 4. These aren't clever stories or man-made ideas that you're going to share with folks. You're not making this stuff up. This is history. And this is history now in the making. Verse 16. We didn't make up clever stories when we told you about the powerful coming of Jesus Christ. Jesus is God the Son. What he did was real. That's why it's lasted 2,000 years and the church is 2 billion people on the planet right now. Don't forget it. Jesus wasn't some wannabe Messiah. He wasn't a man like Joseph Smith that made up a bunch of crap. Sorry to use that word if you're offended. That's what it is. Paul used a much stronger word than that in the Bible, by the way. Because um, this isn't man-made. That's, that's legend. That's, you know, the guy had a, he, he could have been a George Lucas in his day. Joseph Smith made up cities and everything. It's just garbage. Jesus is real. He's history. Colossians 1.15 says he's the visible image of the invisible God. We got to see what God was like by the eyewitness accounts we read. You can't really make this stuff up, actually, because every time humans write something about a Messiah, he comes in with power and, and takes over by force and beats the bad guys up. Jesus turned that all on its ear and let himself get beat up to save the bad guys. This isn't man-made stuff because man wouldn't have thought of that, right? Jesus, God the Son, became God the servant, the suffering servant. That's not made up stuff. And um, the, the fifth point is the Gospels and the Epistles are eyewitness testimony, okay? You got to remember this. You're talking about history, verified history. Peter and James and John were three eyewitnesses to that day. Today, in a court of law, you only need two or three witnesses to confirm the facts of a case. We do that today. And these guys, three of them have said they say all the same thing. Okay? And you could take their Gospels as an affidavit, which I looked up. It's the medieval Latin for he has declared under oath that this is true. When you sit down with, with a lawyer or notary and you sign an affidavit of the truth, what you experience, you are putting yourself... Um, under oath, and you commit perjury if what you're writing is not true. And plus this, people aren't tortured for a myth. Nobody I have ever heard of is tortured for believing um, Zeus, the myths of Zeus. And that's the word Peter uses here, is mythos, Greek. He says, this is not a myth. We weren't tortured. 11 out of 12 of those, I mean, 10 out of 11 of those boys were put to death for their faith. John died as an exile in Patmos. It, you don't go through that if it's not true, right? We saw his majestic splendor with our own eyes. We're telling you, right? Paul also wrote of the eyewitness accounts of Jesus risen from the dead. He said 500 people saw him at once. That's, you can't have a delusion that massive and everybody saw the same thing, right? Hundreds of people saw Jesus after he was risen. Josephus isn't even a Christian historian, and he verified the existence and the work of Jesus Christ. Tacitus is um, a Roman historian who wrote how Nero scapegoated the Christians and put them to death because he burned down part of Rome because he was crazy. Tacitus confirmed that the Christians were started by Christ. So Jesus is historical. We can reliably reconstruct historical events from the eyewitnesses. And there's so many accounts. And they've been checked for centuries and they've been found truthful. The evidence of fulfilled prophecy alone is more evidence than even the miracles that Jesus did that people attested to. Because the prophecies fulfilled, that's crazy how many prophecies were fulfilled. And the sixth point is this. Once you experience the truth, you have confidence in the truth. Dr. Francis Collins, you can watch him on YouTube on the first episode of Alpha. Type in Alpha Episode 1 and go home and watch it tonight. It's fantastic. And he's, he's one of the guys that mapped the human genome. He was an atheist doctor, no experience with Christ. 
He saw the experience and the evidence of Jesus and the hope he gave in one of his patients who was dying, and it made him investigate the evidence for the gospel and the resurrection and Jesus, and he got saved because he, he saw the experience of someone else. Now he's experienced Jesus himself. Once you experience Jesus and his forgiveness and the changing power of his love in a person's life, there's no one that can convince you otherwise that he is real. One of my favorite lines from the first season of The Chosen is this. It's one of the characters that found Jesus, and she said this. All I know is that I was one way, and now I am completely different. And the thing that happened in between was him. I love that. All I know is that I was one way, and now I'm completely different. And the thing that happened in between was Jesus. That's what I can tell you. You got to pay, pay close attention to the evidence in people's lives. And then verse 20 says, you got to realize um, that no prophecy in scripture and all these prophecies were fulfilled was ever coming from somebody's own understanding. You guys got to realize the prophets that wrote things about Jesus 600 years before he came, Isaiah, they didn't understand probably a quarter of what they were writing. They were writing down what God told them to. Isaiah wrote that Jesus would be tortured and beaten beyond human recognition and by his wounds we are healed before crucifixion was even invented. And it's verified that those documents are, are real. The prophets, what they wrote down came true. The fulfilled prophecies about Jesus are amazing. There's 332 distinct Old Testament prophecies about Jesus that came true. And the combination of all that evidence is crazy. It's overwhelming. If you looked at it this way, one man fulfilling eight of the 332 prophecies, the odds are 100, no, sorry, are one in 100 quintillion. That's a lot of zeros. That's all I know. Okay? Because the number of loonies that would take would cover BC two feet deep, and you'd find that one coin that Jesus is the fulfiller of all the Old Testament prophecies. No prophecy in Scripture ever came from a prophet's own understanding. That means this good news is bigger than us. It can't be contrived. It can't be invented. It's not the invention of any man. Instead, God's Spirit moved men along. Moved. He, he came. The Spirit of God came by word from God into the hearts of these men. They wrote it down. Far from inventing the subject of their own predictions, the ancient prophets didn't even know the meaning of what they themselves wrote, but everything they wrote came true. And we have the luxury of looking back in history and seeing how it all came true. So you guys are really living with an advantage. So they're carried beyond themselves, Peter said. Do you want to be carried beyond yourself today? You can use these prophecies, because Peter says they're a light in a dark world. And Peter didn't know when he was writing this down, he was going to be a prophet. John didn't know he would become a prophet, right? One of the greatest, probably the greatest prophetic book ever, Revelation. They became prophets. And what they say and what you read in your Bible is a light in a dark world. And you all need that in a big way right now. You can be carried beyond yourself through the dark by the light of God's word. And that's point seven. Until Jesus comes, pay close attention to the writings of the prophets so you can have the light of Jesus in your heart to find your way through a dark world. Um, I'm getting to the point in this pandemic where um, I can tell if somebody's watching too much news. Whatever news you watch, I can tell when I'm talking to you. Because that's your main source right now. You got to make the Bible your main source right now. The main source of your info, information. And, and I just thought of it. The news is just inflammation. Right? you got to get your information and inspiration and celebration from Jesus. You've got you've to gotta get that going in your heart daily. I mean it when I say if you're feeling down and depressed, please don't watch the news for a week. Try it. Just watch uplifting stuff. It'll change your perspective. I got a friend that has no news because they don't have cable. So they don't watch the news. So when they're, they're really in a good mood. 
all the time. How you doing? Doing good. Yeah, I, I, I could tell, right? What are you doing? Going for a walk. Cool. What are you doing this weekend? Going for a hike. You see, it makes a difference when you don't have that bad news pouring into your heart. You just have good news and good stuff going on, right? So focus on the prophets. That means everything in the Bible and be inspired, okay? So keep paying close attention, Peter says, to the writings of the prophets. Remember, Jesus is coming back when they fix this mess. You know, things aren't okay right now, but they're going to be okay. I love this new song by Toby Mac. I love it. Maybe midnight or midday. He's never early, never late. He will stand by what he claimed. I've lived enough life to say, help is on the way. Help is on the way. Help is on the way. You got to remember that. That song was stuck in my head. I couldn't get it out of my head. and It was a good way to wake up this morning. You got to get that stuff burning in your heart. And remember to keep a light burning. The ancient lamps, they, you know, they the handle and they put oil in that thing to keep it burning. The oil of joy. Ask God's spirit to give you the oil of joy from the scriptures and from truth. Pay close attention and that you, you will burn your light brightly. Keep that in your mind. You know, the Lord is doing big things, folks. The church is going to be stronger than she's ever been. The church actually gets stronger when it's pushed to the margins. People get stronger in their faith when they're, when they're pressed. God's doing big things. And the Holy Spirit will work in your life to bring you the oil of joy if you read the scriptures and get them in your heart. And then point eight, don't adjust God's word to your thinking, but adjust your thinking to God's word. That's important in the day and age we live in. Because if you are going to take um, your thinking and you're going to um, try and get God's word to adjust your thinking, it's not going to work. You got to approach scripture humbly. You got to read with a completely humble attitude. Don't take your erroneous ideas and come into scripture with them. Take your erroneous self and say, Lord, I'm a mess. I'm going to read your word. I want you to speak to me and change my heart. Paul said, renew your mind. Adjust your thinking to God's way of thinking. Don't, uh, don't take your thinking that's been accustomed by what's going on in this world and try and uh, use that as a standard. The Pharisees approached scripture thinking that they understood it. And they didn't. The humble approach is, Lord, I know that I'm flawed. I know that I'm feeling negative. There's a lot going on in my mind and my heart that is wrong. I'm down. I have wrong ideas about you and people around me. I need you to think I need you to adjust my thinking to the truth. I need you to change my mind. There's some Bible teachers out there that think they've got God figured out. They've, they've got their theology settled in their mind. And they're just wrong. And I'm one of them sometimes. We all got to approach scripture saying, Lord, teach me. I'm just a student. My friend Norm is a pastor. And he said the worst thing that ever happened to him was he got his master's degree. Well, I'm a master now. He said, no, no, no. I found out real quick I was a beginner. You got to approach the Bible humbly and ask God to change you. That old song, change my heart, oh God, make it ever new. Change my heart, oh God, make me be like you. You know, there's, there's preachers out there that, that uh, want to be rich and drive nice cars and they only read verses and passages about God's blessing. They're proof texting. They're taking verses out of the scripture. And they say, well, God made David and Solomon rich and Job rich. He wants you to be rich. Right? That's just bad thinking. God wants you to adjust to the truth that you serve a savior who is so humble and traveled the world working as a carpenter, the known world. And he was, he was homeless. Paul said, I'm glad if I got clothes and food. I'm like, what about the house? The, Paul didn't say that. He said, if I got clothing and I'm fed, I'm good. And there was a guy that used to be a rich Pharisee. He didn't graduate from here to here in life. Paul was demoted from here to here. 
to be a slave to the gospel. Joel Osteen won't mention that. He has to justify the 50 million he made touring writing books last year and the $200,000 salary he makes. You haven't got God figured out. So when you come to God's word each day, a good prayer is, Lord, teach me what I do not know. Give me what I do not have. Help me to understand what I do not currently understand. Lord, you're the only one who has you figured out. So give me a glimpse of you. Even if you get to see the back of Jesus like Moses. It will change your heart. So today, would you bow your head with me? And in your heart, just, you know, just pray from where you're really at today. Tell God where you're really at. And Lord, today I pray you change our heart and our thinking and adjust it to the reality of this gospel, this good news. And may we have it embedded deep in our psyche, in our heart, in our soul. May it change the way we live this week. May we remember how good you are. May we remember that you care about us and this world. May we remember that you're sovereign and you have a plan, that you are the King Jesus. So Lord, we consult you this week and ask you to renew us, to make us better than we are today. Strengthen us for we are weak. You are strong. And God's people said, Amen. Amen. Either that car's agreeing with us or there's a security problem. <laughs> Guitar likes the cold. Just try this old course. Change my heart, oh God. Make it ever new. Change my heart, oh God. May I be like you. Change my heart, oh God. Make me ever new. Change my heart, oh God, may I be like you. Change my heart, oh God, make it ever new. Change my heart, oh God, may I be like you. Sing this. some uh, free stuff to read to fuel your lamp with the oil of God. Thanks for being brave Canadians and coming to church. We are so blessed. God is good. Amen? Amen. Man, have a great week.
Is that sir? Really, Richard. Thanks for being here. <laughs>